Hello, you're watching a series on Sugar Bites Factory. My name's Tom Cosm, and in this video, we're gonna be focusing on the envelopes and the LFOs of the modulators section. I'm not gonna be focusing on the sample and hold for this video because it's such a strange, unique, wild beast that I feel like it needs its own video later in the series. So we're not gonna cover this for this video. We're just gonna look at the envelopes and the LFOs, a bit of a recap. So we have two envelopes in our modulators area, envelope one and envelope two. If you're not too sure what envelopes are or you're new to synthesis, you can think of them as little kind of timelines that you can apply to something in the synth every time a key is played. Usually they're assigned to the volume of an oscillator or to the cutoff filter. These particular envelopes are ADSR envelopes or attack, decay, sustain, release. Attack is how long it takes to go from the zero point to the peak point. Decay is how long it takes to go from the peak point to the sustain point. The sustain point is something you define. So this is when you're holding down the note. This is the level that it's going to remain at. And the release is how long it takes to dissipate or how long it takes to fade away once you've released the note. We've got a nice little timeline down here that kind of shows you the shape of the whole process. We have a few more options in our envelopes. We have this button here. When enabled, it attaches velocity to the envelope. So the stronger the velocity of the note played, the uh, more strong the envelope will be. We have a different, different ways of triggering the envelope. So it's just on normal for now. So that's when it receives a mini note, it will start the envelope. We have a loop mode. So instead of finishing the envelope, it'll actually go back and loop itself over and over, kind of like a little LFO. And we do have a knob here, which allows us to kind of fine tune the curves of all of those four parameters bar the sustain. So some people like it all nice and straight, some people like it curvy. It's up to you to play around and figure out what you like. Now by default, envelope one is usually assigned to the volume master fader here. And we can see this by going into the drop down menu below the uh, master fader. And you can see we have four options, off, gate, env1 and env2. I'm just gonna leave it on env1 for now. So that means that this envelope is attached to the master volume. So let me just play a chord for you. Pretty straightforward. What I'm gonna do is bring the attack time up quite long and play the chord. And you'll notice the chord now creeps in, the volume slowly coming in. That's because of the lo long attack time. If I make the attack time quite short, but make the release time quite long and play a chord, when I let go, it's gonna take a long time to fade away. So attack and release are really good for pad sounds. They kind of morph into each other and it's really good to have a long attack and a long release on pads. But if you don't want a pad sound, get rid of the attack, get rid of the release, bring the sustain down and have a very short decay. Okay, let's move on to envelope two now. I want to assign envelope two to something else within the synth, and I'm gonna use the modulation matrix to do this. I want to assign it to the cutoff filter, which is this knob here. So over on my sources here, I'm chosen envelope two as my source, and I've picked cutoff filter as my destination. I give it a positive value, and now this envelope is now applied to the cutoff filter. I am gonna bring the uh, attack and sustain and decay times up on this envelope, just so we can have some notes to play, and let's play a chord. Very good, let's make the decay time on envelope two shorter and I'm gonna bring the curve back so it is a bit more snappy on the decay. Let's bring the filter cut off right down and see what happens. Very good. Now before I mention there's this extra option where we can use something else to trigger the envelope. So I'm gonna do that right now. I'm gonna go into sequence one. So now it's listening to sequence number one and every time something happens in sequence one, it's gonna re-trigger the envelope. If we go over to sequence one, you see I've made a little pattern here. So I'm just gonna hold down the chord. So that's how you can re-trigger the envelopes using the sequences, and it's really, really, really fun to do. Okay, let's move on to the LFOs now. We have two LFOs in the modulators area, LFO1 and LFO2. LFOs are low frequency oscillators. So they're kind of like envelopes, except they're constantly moving. They have a particular shape and they kind of send a signal that goes up and down and up and down. And you can attach this to something within your synthesizer. The key thing about the LFOs or the key parameter is the rate. And this is the big knob in the middle here. And as we move this up, you'll see that this is wobbling faster. And as we bring it down, it starts slowing down. You'll also notice that we've got fractions 
around the edges here is the increments. That's because it's currently set to sync mode. Sync mode means that it's always going to wobble in time to the BPM that you've specified in your DAW or you've specified inside factory. So it's always going to be in time. The wobbles are always going to be in time with the music. However, you can turn this off by clicking on the clock button and that means we have complete free control over the rate from 0 0.05 hertz, which is very slow, all the way up to 500 hertz, which is incredibly crazy. So let's bring it down so it's mm, roughly about there. And I want to assign this to something in factory. So I'm going to do that using the modulation matrix. Here's our LFO1 source. The destination I'm sending it to is OSC1A, and I'm going to give it mm, a little bit of intensity. And instantly you'll see the sync freak of uh, OSC1, which is OSC1A parameter, move up and down in time with the LFO. Let's just play a chord to see how that sounds. Let's give it more intensity, so it's, the LFO is going to affect that parameter more. Now you'll notice that the LFO restarts itself when I play a new note. That's because we've got this drop down menu here which tells it what to do and when to re-trigger. MIDI pitch, it waits for a new note before it restarts the cycle. MIDI gate, it will, uh, it will wait for any note, so this is kind of the default one. So any note that's played on the keyboard, it will re-trigger the LFO and it will start from its initial position. We can also trigger it from the sequences like we did with the envelopes before. And there's also free where it won't be re-triggered, it will just continue uh, doing its pattern over and over again. There's also another option here which is interesting. This turns on polyphony mode. So that means if you play a chord or more than one note, the LFO will kind of split itself over amongst all those different notes. Um, so each note gets gets a version of this LFO. It's kind of duplicating itself and giving itself to each note. If it's on this mode, then all of the notes are going to stick to one standard LFO. But if it's on this, they all get their own separate kind of paths. We also have a one-shot button here, which is uh, quite interesting. This just means the LFO will play once and then stop. So it's kind of turning it into an envelope in a way. So let's just play it once. And you'll see the LFO stops there. The other key parameter we have here in the middle is the phasing. You can think of this as kind of an offset, or something that gives it a bit of lag, or it brings something a bit forward. You might be uh, in sync mode, and you might have an LFO assigned to a wob 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 bass, and you want the high end of the wob to be on your snare, but it's not quite on the snare. It might be a bit after, it might be a bit before. You can use the phase knob to kind of nudge it forward a bit. So it's kind of used to get something in time with things that you want uh, to match up or synchronize. The other thing you can do is you can change the shape. At the moment it's a nice sine wave. We can see the shape down the bottom here. It, it goes all the way up to the top quite smoothly. It reaches the top and then it comes down and it's all nice and smooth. That's very good. But we can do things like triangle shapes. We can have uh, square shapes which are very sudden and very sharp. If we look at the sync freak now you'll see how it's quickly snapping to one value then quickly snapping to another value. Uh, there's all kinds of different curves and shapes that you can do. It will repeat the shape over and over and over. If you go to the right there's also some interesting kind of random type things. So this one will, will kind of randomize. I'll speed it up quite fast. You'll see the sync freak is now picking random values at a certain rate. So that's quite a lot of fun as well. So I think that's about it for the LFOs and the envelopes. Very basic construction tools for synthesis, but very, very handy to have. You couldn't have synthesis without these guys. And remember, I will be covering the sample and hold at a later stage in a more advanced video. Cheers for watching.